day 17 of the new you for the new year success challenge. Dr. Herbert Harris here. Welcome to the new you for the new year 21 day challenge. I challenge you to use the new you for the new year success bundle this first month of the year to set yourself up for health, wealth, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money throughout the year. Get the new you for the new year success bundle now at www.herbertharris.info. That's www.herbertharris.info. Every day for 21 days, I will share a success training to help you start this year strong. Watch the daily trainings on Facebook at Life Vision TV and DR Success Man. And now, the success training for today. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is Success Mentorship Class number 204. And our topic for today is getting rid of negative people. And I picked this topic because as we move into this new year, it's very important who we permit to come along with us. And so as we uh, move into the new year, we have to be very discriminating about who we're going to permit to be a part of our crew. Of course, all of our trainings, all of our teachings are based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. And if you don't have one, get one. If you have one, get another one. It's available, of course, on Amazon, on Walmart, on all the digital websites, and of course, on our website, herbertharris.com. I also want to make an announcement about our special course. You know, as we go into this new year, it is important to master the success principles that can take you from where you are to where you want to be. And so what we're going to do in this class is give you some insight on who you want to permit to come along with you on the trip. So our home study course, the new you for the new year home study course is designed to give you the tools to take you from where you are to where you want to be. Go to our website, herbertharris.com and click on the, there's a little link at the top and you'll get one information about the new you for the new year home study course. Plus you'll get a free setting and achieving your goals booklet. Thank you so much for joining us on Instagram, on Facebook and share this broadcast today. Like it, make some comments and share it. This topic today, getting rid of negative people is a very, let's just say a profound topic because we live in an interactive world. To put many of our success principles into action requires us to, to interact with other people. And so who we permit to come into our lives is critical on achieving our success. Marilyn Monroe had a beautiful quote that I think sums it up. She said, cutting negative people out of my life doesn't mean I hate them. It simply means that I respect me. Marilyn Monroe said, cutting negative people out of my life doesn't mean I hate them. It simply means I respect me. And that's a great foundation for this message today because it's often challenging to cut negative people out of your life. You have to ask yourself, why is it important to cut negative people out of your life? Why is it important to eliminate negative people as you engage upon your success journey? Well, number one, negative people drain your energy. A negative vibration, think about this. We live in a world of vibrations. The positive vibrations of, of good, of, of positivity, of success, of achievement, of abundance. 
is balanced or neutralized by negative thinking, lack and limitation. And so negative thinking represents a negative vibration. And so when you have a negative vibration and a, and a positive vibration come together, it can cancel out. We often talk about the ship that is our life and that we have a crew on that ship and let's assume they're rowing. Well, if one group is rowing one way and the other group is weighing, rowing another way, the ship is not gonna go, it's gonna go around in circles. So negative people drain your energy. Negative people suck up your time. Negative people steal your dreams. When we look at that, that image, we often talk about that life is a garden. There are flowers, the positive thoughts, the positive people, and there are weeds, negative thoughts, negative people. Well, when you permit negative people to come into your life, it's like permitting weeds to come into your garden. When you encourage negative people to come into your life, it's like planting weeds. So the idea of negative people being in your life can be counterproductive to your success journey this year. Joel Osteen said, you cannot hang out with negative people and expect to live a positive life. Joel Osteen, you cannot live, hang out with negative people and expect to live a positive life. This is a subject I think that so many people have dealt with, even Mark Twain. Mark Twain said, don't walk away from negative people, run. <laughs> so what we're saying today, folks, is negative people can have such a devastating impact on your success journey that you need to get away from them. Who you permit to come on your journey will impact your ability to succeed. So today we're going to look at the nine ways to eliminate negative people from your life. And remember, as Marilyn Monroe said, it doesn't mean that you hate them. It's just, it just means that you love yourself more. Number one, be clear about who you are and what you're worth. Be clear about who you are and what you are worth. That is critical because if you're not clear about yourself, if you have a confused vibration, remember whoever we are is represented by the vibrations we send out to the universe. When I practiced law, I represented a fellow who was a, uh, what do you call it, a pickpocket, a thief. And he said he knew who to, whose pocket to pick. And he based that on how the people, the person moved. He, he, he could pick up an energy from them. And so if you want to begin to, ne to eliminate negative people from your life, it's important that you're not sending out negative vibrations to yourself. See, like attracts like. If you have a lot of negative people interacting you, if you look back over the last few months, the last year, and you see that you're attracting a lot of negative people, that's a clue that you may, you may need a, a checkup from the neck up and from the heart down. So when we start talking about negative people, be clear about who you are and your value. You see, you're worth exactly what you say you're worth. And if you are attracting negative people, there may be some confusion inside about your true worth. So affirm that you are worth all the great things that you desire to be. Know your full potential, know your true value. You see, if you see yourself as a winner, as a positive person, as a person who's going places, you send out a different vibration. And so recognize that you are a very special special person with boundless capacity for health, for wealth, for success, for prosperity, for money. You see, once you have defined yourself and are clear about who you are, you can be much more discriminating in getting negative people out of your life. So that's number one, check up from the neck up. Number two, identify the negative people we know them by their works. You know that spiritual principle. 
You know the tree by the fruit of that tree. So you know negative people by their work, their works. You know who they are. Who's trying to control you? If you want to start eliminating these negative people from your life, let's go through these questions. Who's trying to control you? If there are people in your life trying to control you, they may be a negative person. Who disregards your boundaries? You know, there are people that you can be in the middle of doing something very, very important. They'll burst right in the door and interrupt you. So who do you have in your life that disregards your boundaries? They may, may be a negative person. Who takes without giving? You know, we all have those friends who always want something, always need something, always taking. Who in your life is taking without giving you anything back? That might be a negative person. Here's a tough one. Who's always right? <laughs> you know those people, no matter what the conversation, no matter what the discussion, they are always right. So who do you have in your life that's always right? They may be a negative person. Who loves to be a victim? Oh my goodness. There are some people who come into your life and all they share is their victimness. They may be a negative person. Who lacks accountability? Who's always making excuses for situations, for the interactions with you, who never take responsibility that whatever it is, maybe they did it. They, they may be a negative person. So, it's important that we learn how to identify negative people and we identify their, them by their fruits. We identify them often by how they make you feel. You see, our feeling nature is like a great uh, radar. It picks up on negative people, on negativity, but we often shut it down. We often ignore it because we have our own designs. How many relationships have you been in where you knew this was the wrong person? But for other reasons, you know, maybe they had a good job. Maybe they were a good provider. We have some friends who, who married a person that they really didn't care for because that person had a good pension, had a nice home. But in the long run, people always let you know who they are. Who in your life emits that negative vibration? that makes you feel bad. Trust your feelings. When people tell you who they are, believe them. Number three, don't expect them to change. We get into relationships sometime and we know that person is not the right one. And for some reason we think that they're gonna change. You know, sometimes relationships are like boats. In the boat industry, they say the two best days of being a boat owner is the day you buy it and the day you sell it. Okay. And so sometimes in relationships, we'll get in a situation where we know we can feel it, trust your feelings, that this is not the right person, that this is not somebody who can go on this journey with you. But for some reason, you ignore that and you think that they'll change. I, I remember asking a friend, I said, well, didn't you see this in the beginning? Didn't you see that this person was a liar, a cheater? Didn't you see all of that? You know, many times when people get in relationships, especially where it's one of those, uh, I call it a crisscross relationship where one person steals another person from another person. You know, you've seen the ones where a guy steals somebody's wife and then they get into a relationship and then the, then the, the, the wife wonders why the guy doesn't trust her. Or the same when a, when a wife steals somebody else's husband and they get into a relationship and the husband wonders why his wife doesn't trust him. And, and so to expect that people are going to change is unreasonable. They may even say they want to change, but you're there, you can see it. And if you don't see that evidence of change, then it's not a good relationship. You cannot choose to change for them. 
Change is a personal choice. You know, the second law of success says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. But you have to choose to make that change. When you recognize that, that you can't change them, it makes it easier to get rid of them. Oh, yes, yes, that's a big one for me. I got you. One of our comments on uh, Instagram. Number four, establish and maintain boundaries. Decide what you will tolerate and what you will not tolerate from your family, from your friends, from your spouse, from those you're in relationships with, from your business associates, from acquaintances. You see, people treat you the way you permit them to treat you. When they said somebody dogs somebody out, they permitted them to dog them out for whatever reason. There are extreme circumstances. There are people who can get in relationships where they literally get captured by somebody else's negativity. And that's extreme and they need help. But once you establish your boundaries, then be unyielding about it. I recommend that you make a list of your boundaries or make a list of your personal boundaries, the things that you will and will not accept in other people. Sandra often says she can't stand a lie. Can't stand a thief. Once you define your boundaries, then stick to it. You see, if you define a boundary and then you go against your own word, what does that tell the other person? When you say you can't lie to me and then you catch them in a lie, and you maintain the relationship. What is that really saying? That's really saying it's okay to lie to me. So establish your boundaries and maintain your boundaries. Enforce your boundaries. No exceptions. Remember this. What you accept, you get. Don't accept anything that you don't want. Number five. Don't get sucked in. People do things to get your attention. Negative people sometimes make it seem like they really need you. That they're in a crisis. And you know, all of us have a desire to help, a desire to be a blessing to someone else. And so when they find themselves in a crisis, when they find themselves in a situation, they reach out for your help and you almost feel obligated to help them. But don't keep getting sucked in. And you know, you, you, I'm not saying to be so hard that you cannot help a person, but understand many times the crisis that they need your help in was a crisis that they created themselves. Negative people create drama just to get your attention. Sometimes it's on us. Some of us have that desire to rescue people. Ooh -ooh. I have a friend and she was saying she wants to be a blessing to everybody she meets. And there are some people that are truly deserving and worthy of that blessing but there are others, negative people who just suck it up, who just take and take and take until there's nothing left. Think about the, the Good Samaritan. There was a Good Samaritan crossing the Golden State Bridge one day, and there was a man there on the bridge ready to jump. And the Good Samaritan came up and he said, it can't be that bad. Life cannot be that bad. There's so much to live for. And then the man who was uh, preparing to jump started sharing all the negativity, all the things that were going on in his life. And the Good Samaritan bought into it so badly and so deeply that they both jumped off the bridge. Folks, don't get sucked in. Don't feel bad about it. Sometimes permitting yourself to get sucked in, you become an enabler. 
And instead of helping the very person you want to help, you're literally enabling them to continue in whatever their insanity is. Number six. Know that they will resist. Not all people. There's some people who really want to be trans. But most negative people will resist your efforts to neutralize their negativity. See, negative people don't like being ignored. And so once you start to transform yourself and say, I don't accept that. This is not good for me. This vibration that you're radiating does not help me. They'll do more. <laughs> They'll really get agitated. When negative people see you're about to cut them off, they throw it all out at you. I mean, they do it all. They create diversions. They create crisis. But don't give in. You may be like the mother bird, the mother eagle. You may have to stop enabling them so that they can learn how to fly. When you enable people, you permit them to get results based on your vibration instead of theirs. You, help, you continue to help them solve their challenges and solve their problems. They don't get any stronger. So know that they will resist. Number seven, choose your battles. Negative people, those are, that, that, that weed analogy. When you have that garden that is your life, those weeds will keep growing and you have to be ever vigilant. You can clear all the weeds out of your garden. You can fertilize your flowers. You come back in two days and weeds are back again. So when you're dealing with negativity, choose your battles. Because dealing with negativity requires so much energy from you. Don't let other people control you. You see, when they control you, when they can suck you into their battle, they literally take possession of your mind, your strength, your vibrations, all of your resources even. Every confrontation now, you have a choice whether to engage or not engage. Choose your battles. Only involve yourself in those battles where you can see and sincerely believe there can be a positive outcome. Sometimes we call it tough love. But choose your battles because some people, you have to cut them off completely. They are so negative and so infectious that they will destroy you. There are others you may have to give limited access. You know, one of the differences between uh, your family and your neighbors is you can not see your neighbors, but your family, they're going to show up for dinner or Thanksgiving or Christmas. And so you may have to give them limited access, but you choose the battles. You choose how to engage. Number eight, this is the biggie. Don't feel guilty. The last weapon of a negative person is to make you feel guilty about being positive. You've heard it. You don't care about people anymore. You don't care about me. You've heard this. Now that you're successful and making money, you don't have time for me. No, I don't have time to engage in craziness of your own making. So don't feel guilty. It's not that you're abandoning them, but you're focusing on you. And it may be that you're sticking to your guns, that you're not feeling guilty about it may inspire them to change. You know, there are times when you have to, that tough love thing says that you cannot facilitate this person because you're really not helping them. Reverend Ike used to say, <laughs> when he fired a person, he never said you're fired. He said, I'm going to give you the opportunity for greatness elsewhere. And that's saying, hey, you may be a good person. You're just not good for me. <laughs> you're just not good in this environment. So don't feel guilty about releasing negative people. If your feelings, if your internal sensory system says, this is a person who is negative, they are counterproductive to your efforts, accept it and bid them goodbye. And then finally, number nine, bring on the positive. As long as you see the good, as long as you see the God, as long as you see the positivity, 
then you'll create a vibration that attracts more positivity. When you get rid of the negative people around you, it opens the door for more positive people to show up. You have no idea how many people look at you and judge you by the people who are close to you. And so if those people who are close to you are negative, demonstrating negative characteristics, a person on the outside will judge you from that concept of birds of a feather flock together. So you focus on the positive. Clear away all the negativity, and believe me, nature abhors a vacuum. The moment you get negative people out of your space, positive people will come in. The moment you get negative ideas out of your space, positive ideas will come in. Stay around people who honor you, who uplift you, who make you feel good about yourself, who encourage you. Your positivity can neutralize another person's negativity. Your positivity can protect you in the future because when you're extremely positive about who you are and what you're about, your vibration, you repel those negative people because now you're attracting positive people. So let's, let's, let's go back and summarize today. I think that the purpose of this class today was to give you the tools to create the new you, to give you the tools to put the people on your ship so that your crew will be people who support you, enable you, and help you achieve your goals. Number one, be clear about you and your true value. Whatever you send out comes back to you, so be careful about what you're radiating. Number two, identify the negative people. Know them by their deeds. Know them how they make you feel, and once they tell you who they are, believe them. Number three, don't expect them to change. That change is not in your purview. They have to choose to change. Number four, establish and maintain your boundaries. People treat you the way you permit them to treat you. Number five, don't get sucked in. Negative people are like those weeds. If you don't do something about it, they will consume your garden. Number six, know that they're going to resist. The moment you start to demonstrate the positivity of your being and of your goals and the things you want to be, do, and have, the negative people will fight you. Understand that and act accordingly. Number seven, choose your battles. Negative people are diligent. They don't want to let you go. They see you. You know, when, when they're part of your posse, they're riding on your dream. So choose your battles. Engage in those battles where you can see a positive outcome for all involved, whether that outcome is that help somebody learn how to fly or whether that positive outcome is to help you learn how to flee. Number eight, don't feel guilty. It's all about you. When I say that, what I'm meaning is you were created for a purpose, a good purpose. And anything that contradicts that purpose, namely negative people who come in and create a different vibration, a negative vibration, don't feel guilty about clearing them out. It will help you and it will often help them. And finally, bring on the positive. Focus on the good. Focus on the great. Focus on health. Focus on wealth. Focus on success. Focus on positivity, focus on possibilities, focus on opportunities. When you can do these nine things, you can clear the decks. You can get negative people out of your space so that you can be what you want to be. So that you can do what you want to do and so that you can have whatever you want to have, always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. In spite of all the <laughs> technical difficulties, thank you so much for being with us today. Share this broadcast, like it, write some comments. I'd love to see on Facebook, on 
Instagram some of your comments about how you're able to identify and deal with negative people. Your comments may be an inspiration to someone else. When people see that you've done it, they say, hey, I got that same person into my life. Someone once said there, there are not a lot of negative people. They just move around a lot. <laughs> also, go to our website, herbertharris.com. Get our free Setting and Achieving Your Goals booklet to make this year your year for outrageous success. Writing your goals and facilitating that will help you. Also, get information about our new home study course. New You for the New Year home study course, a course designed to help you go from where you are to where you want to be with a workbook, with exercises to help you crystallize the things that you need to be, to do, and to have to take you where you want to go. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, author of the 12 Universal Laws of Success, inviting you to join me on a personal success journey. This journey is sponsored by the New You for the New Year Success Bundle. This is a special bundle of over $250 in digital products to help you achieve outrageous success this year. It includes the 12 Universal Laws of Success ebook. And that's the electronic version of the 12 Universal Laws of Success. It includes the 12 Universal Laws of Success audiobook. Over six hours of recorded information. It's the book on tape. You can listen to it in your car, in your bed, wherever you are. It also includes the complete New You for the New Year Home Study Guide. Now this is a transformational home study course to help you go from where you are to where you want to be. It comes with a study guide it's, and a workbook and a number of audios, how to study, how to assess your present situation, how to make life changes, how to set new goals and objectives, how to make an action plan and a blueprint for your success. In addition to these things, you get the 12 Universal Laws of Success workbook so that you, as you read the book, you can fill in the answers and it will help you retain the information. You also get a live recording of a seminar on the 12 Universal Laws of Success that you can listen to and, and it will be you just like you're there. There's also a wealth building and trying times audio to help you have more money at the end of the month. The audio on the Law of Command will help you use your power of speech to create the world exactly the way you want it to be. And the 12 Affirmations to Live By poster so that you can reprogram your mind, reprogram your thoughts to be exactly what they need to be to create success. And how much does it cost? Over $250 in bonuses for $77. That's $77 for you to help you achieve health, wealth, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. That's right, $77 to help you create the new you in this new year. Go to our website, www.herbertharris.info to learn more and buy now, www.herbertharris.info. Thank you.